Hi, I'm Bill Arnold. Thank you for listening to this podcast. There are many more podcasts available at MyFaithRadio.com. Your support makes this possible. Thank you. And a warm welcome to the afternoon show. I'm Bill Arnold. I don't know if you sign up for the verse of the day, but boy, do I love the verse of the day today on the Faith Radio app, which is Numbers chapter 6, 24 through 25. Let me read it. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. I don't know if that's something you're wanting today, but it's something I am wanting. And this speaks to my heart in a big, big way today. So I'm glad that was the verse of the day. And you can sign up for that verse of the day if you head over to myfaithradio.com. But today, I promise that just really, really spoke to me. So I'm looking forward to my time. Uh, Pastor David Miles is here for the Monday Afternoon Mix. And in hour two, Dr. Mark Muska is going to join the program for Ask the Professor. You don't have to wait for that hour to get your questions over. You can send them anytime you like. The text line is now open, 877-933-2484. Again, 877-933-2484. Pastor David Miles is going to talk with us today about trusting in the everlasting dominion of God. I think this is going to be a wonderful hour because I've read some of the notes that he's created and they are wonderful and I can't wait to get into this. David, welcome back. Hey, Bill. Great to be back yeah. with you. Why it's so good to be with uh, both of you. Such an honor and a privilege uh, to uh, hang out and to be with our listening family. Um, you know, what we're getting in today today is actually just straight out of God's Word and out of just kind of personal reading. As I've been reading through a chronological study Bible that brought me to these passages but Bill, I just also want to just say something that you noted earlier when you gave the invitation for people to um, join in in the verse of the day. Oh yeah. And the Bible says, you know, the grass, uh, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord will remain forever. And it, it's always that reminder that's really framing even what we're talking about today, just how God's word, and even more importantly, the God of the word who gave that as a gift to us he is forever yeah it's so good all right david i'm looking at daniel chapter four may i read a couple of these verses 34 to 37 absolutely is that something that would be timely right now that would be timely right okay now. at the end of that time i nebuchadnezzar raised my eyes toward heaven and my sanity was restored then i praised the most high i honored and glorified him who lives forever His dominion is an eternal dominion. His kingdom endures from generation to generation. Wow. I love that. Yeah. And this is, you know, remember reading this passage years ago and coming across it and just thinking how profound um, what's happening here. Now, a little bit of the context. This is King Nebuchadnezzar of the the Babylonians. Uh, And so, you know, when Israel goes into exile... Uh, and, you know, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're, they're brought into exile uh, with the rest of the individuals. And, you know, earlier in chapter 3, you have the story of the fiery furnace where Nebuchadnezzar's trying to get the three Hebrew boys to bow their knees uh, to him and to the God that he established. And they're like, no, the Most High God is who we follow. Mm. And even to make the point, Nebuchadnezzar, Go ahead and light the match. We're not going to bow right. because we have an eternal God. And so chapter 4 opens up with Nebuchadnezzar reflecting back and saying that God is the most high God. And he gets this dream that comes as he's sitting in his house and he feels utterly you know, just shaken and terrified by this dream. And he calls in all the wise people and he's like, hey, you know, can you guys, you know, interpret this dream for for us, and none of the people can. And then remembers Daniel, remembers Daniel that gave the the 
interpretation of the statue that right. he saw. And Daniel basically tells him, you know, um, you're this person that's been given authority, an emphasis word, given authority at this time to, number one, even live. Uh, and you have this greatness that reaches to the heavens, but there's one greater than you. And here's the thing. In verse 27, Daniel, before the king, okay, before the king, he says, let my counsel be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by practicing righteousness and your iniquities by showing mercy to the oppressed, like God cares about justice, that there may perhaps be a lengthening of your prosperity. And what goes on to happen is that Nebuchadnezzar, after 12 months, he's walking in his palace thinking he's the cat's meow. Yeah. And he's just like, you know what? Uh, and it even says in verse 30, is not this great Babylon, which I have built by the mighty power as a royal residence and for the glory of my majesty. Verse 31, while the words were still in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven. And the Lord spoke to him and said, you know what? You're about to lose your kingdom and you're about to go off and literally spend seven years would do and living as a beast. And Daniel had told him that earlier mm -hmm. in the beginning of chapter four. And sure enough, you know, immediately verse 33 says, immediately the words were fulfilled against Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from among men. And then verse 34 said this, at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to the heaven. So here's the most powerful person. And at the end of the day, whatever person thinks in their mindset that they are powerful, you still don't own the heavens. You know, and we need to remember that mm -hmm. when the world seems to be shaken, God in his heaven is not shaken. Okay. And there's a place that our eyes have to look to. And it's, it's basically, he says, my reason returned to me and I bless the most high God. And so this is the context that brings Nebuchadnezzar to saying these words. Here's this great person that had all this rule and power, but at the end of the day, there's someone greater. There is a most high God. And I think part of today, as we find encouragement in the word, is a reminder that no matter what's going on, there is a most high God who loves us through Jesus. Mm -hmm. and He really is in control. So this is the context that brings us to Nebuchadnezzar saying the words that you read in verse 34. Mm -hmm. And David Miles, it's important today that we can all reflect on the realization of God's sovereignty in our life. You take someone as powerful as Nebuchadnezzar who realized God's sovereignty and a great reminder for us, whatever we're going through, whatever trial we have or whatever suffering we have today, that there is a sovereign God who has eyes upon us. Yeah, he does. And I mean, like here you have Nebuchadnezzar making these words and he, he didn't have the gift that the Holy Spirit has been given to us, that Jesus says, behold, I've given you an advocate in John chapter 14, a helper to bring to mind these things and to fill you and to give me your life. But even that unsaved king could see that there was a most high God that was greater than him, that was sovereign over things that he had no control over. So David, let's talk how important it is for us to trust in God's unchanging dominion because we have circumstances every day that are changing and shifting. And uh, we have to understand that despite whatever we've got, God is unchanging and his dominion is to be trusted. I'm preaching this to myself right now, pal. Bro, just so you know, I'm preaching uh, it with you. I mean, well, like preach away because you know, I need to hear it again and again. And, and I think that's, you know, there was a gentleman who wrote a book about the, the need of uh, a gospel primer was a book. And it talked about the need of preaching the gospel to ourselves. Amen. And, and meaning like the gospel is not just something you heard once. It's a reminder. And we do that in communion, but a reminder of these things of preaching to ourselves. Because like, and I'm glad you brought that up, Bill, because sometimes people can think that they hear people from a certain platform or they hear things and they just naturally think that everyone just has it all worked out and they have it together. No, mm -hmm. you know, we're leaning on the everlasting arms of Jesus, just as the people who are listening mm -hmm. to this are. The good news is that there are everlasting arms to lean on, you know. And so um, just that, that unchanging thing that despite 
um, financial, despite political landscapes, despite health landscapes, despite, you know, um, the fluctuation of, of life, knowing that this morning the sun rose. Well, it was actually in Minneapolis raining this morning, it, but it eventually it, rose. It was. It, it did. It was a lot of rain this morning. <laughs> it was. Yeah. It was wet, and you know, and that's not to correct you on air, by the way. Well, you know, but here's a good thing because it also is a reminder back biblically back to perspective, because just because the atmospheric levels that are determined by altitude and feet, right. and then in, in the international by meters. Even those at a certain level, though they might be clouded and causing condensation and rain to come down, at the end of the day, once you get above those clouds and have a different perspective, guess what? Sun still comes up. You bet. And so, like, there's this thing that even though we might not see the sun, I think we can get a witness on that one, doesn't mean that the sun's not there. Amen. Okay? Yeah, amen. And just because the winds are blowing doesn't mean that everything is blowing around, that there are some things that are just firm in life. And so you're, it's not a correction, Bill. All all it is is true. Like That's true. With our human eyes, we right. see things, but it gives us an opportunity to see a God who isn't blown around and that when it rains, he's not washed away. Yeah. You know, he is a rock. Yeah. And what a great reminder for all of us. I don't know where you're at today with uncertainty, whether David just mentioned if it's health or finances or a family relationship or something that you've got on your heart today. No doubt you have something. And just a great reminder of God's sovereignty. And I'm again, David, I'm still preaching to myself. Well, You know, we'll get to this later with some of the verses of encouragement, but, you know, we've talked often and, you know, some things are, they're good reminders, kind of, you know, like there's some food that mom and grandma that made, you know, you didn't just eat it once, you know, (laughs) just, there's something about it that just, and same things like with the word of God, encouraging one another in our faith, you know, you know, encourage one another while the days are evil, you know, um, you know, speak. And so there's a lot of one another's and we never know what's going on in a person's life. I mean, one of the things you guys know is like, I speak on a number of topics, including like mental wellness and resiliency and, you know, self-awareness, taking action and, you know, sharing my own story of a failed suicide attempt and working with schools and colleges and stuff where a lot of kids and adults are going through things. And it's always this reality my locker mate took 10 seconds as a 15-year-old to invite me to something. And that's why I'm sitting here. That's, it's amazing. It's just an amazing story. Right. Yeah. And so here's going back to your earlier illustration. Like, we woke up this morning, the sun came up, but it was raining here. And sometimes for us as believers, despite the clouds, we, we know the sun comes up. But for some people who are stuck in the midst of the storm— All they see is the clouds and the rains and the tornadoes. Mm -hmm. So sometimes a simple invitation from us just to say, how are you doing? Hey, would you mind just grabbing a cup of coffee? I I just, like, look, I did this yesterday with a friend um, that I know who's going through a difficult moment and, you know, marriage is unwinding. And just text the person. I said, I just want to sit down and just get together with you and just see how you are doing and listen. And so took two hours and sat in a caribou and just talked and just listened and asked questions, you know, and, and, and doing that. So sometimes just being available and this person doesn't really believe in God. They don't believe that there's not a God, but they're not, that faith is not an important thing, but still saying to him, like, listen, I'm praying for you and I'm praying for your family. Um, And so us being available, because a lot of things that we find is that a lot of people looking outwards are often thinking that everyone else's lives are sunshine and butterflies. Mm -hmm. And to your point, David, just being available and being there for them, it's not our job. Just remember, it's not our job to 
lead them to faith necessarily. Only the right. Holy Spirit can move in their hearts. Right. But it is our job to help plant the seeds and to introduce it to them. So we get this feeling or this idea of being rejected, I think, and that scares us away sometimes. Mm-hmm. But we need to remember they're not rejecting us by saying no to it. And if you don't take that opportunity to be present, you may never know what can happen, just like your friend did mm-hmm. all those years ago. And look what it's led to. Yeah. And, and let's do this. Because sometimes people have said this, you know, um, kids have felt this with parents, spouses have felt this with one another in conversations with unbelievers. Let's not treat people as projects. Mm. Okay. Let's treat them like people. Right. And and all of us has been at a place where it maybe felt like someone was treating you as a to-do or a project versus just, you know, being there. And so like... Let God be at work and know that sometimes it may it might not it might not really ever be you. You know, look, Lance didn't think just saying, Hey Dave, yeah, what are you doing Thursday? Nothing. Wanna come with me to student venture? Lance wasn't sitting here thinking, Oh, if I say these words, Dave's magically gonna get saved. There wasn't the pressure. All he was doing is like, dude, what are you doing? You wanna come with me to this event? So why don't we let God be God Mm -hmm. and let's just be faithful to be attentive and pour in or share or be quiet. Amen. How about sometimes the greatest thing you can do is to give a person a side hug and say nothing. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Just like you say, Dave, say nothing. (laughs) All right, we're going to take a little break. We'll come back as we continue our discussion on trusting in the everlasting dominion of God. Pastor David Miles is here with me and Wyatt as well. David's a speaker and a mental health advocate and consultant. And if you have a question or comment, you can certainly send it over. We'd love to hear what you're thinking right now. 877-933-2484. Be right back. You might be the kind of person that goes to Paris and still listens to Faith Radio on the app. Or you might be more like the person that goes into the next room in your apartment and listens. The good news is, is using the app is just as easy in both places. Downloading the free app is crazy easy. Just text the word app to 877-933-2484 and click the link. And if you happen to be in Paris, there is a really nice little coffee shop not far from the Eiffel Tower that serves a really nice chocolate biscotti. So glad to be with you today. We're trusting in the everlasting dominion of God. Uh, Pastor David Miles and Wyatt are here, and we are digging into uh, Daniel, the book of Daniel, where David's been studying a lot lately, and we are learning about uh, God's gift of authority, um, Daniel's message to Belshazzar, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar kingship and greatness and glory and majesty. Let's discuss. Yeah, let's let's do that. And I, I just had a, a brief like thing that I forgot because you beautifully read uh, 434. Mm-hmm. And then after, and I want to go because those two verses together really are powerful. And it says, Nebuchadnezzar says, for his dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are counted as nothing, and he, the Most High God, does according to his will among the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say to him, what have you done? Mm. Like, that's ultimate authority, you know, and this is the same God who calls us into relationship with him through his son, Jesus Christ. Like, he doesn't just call us just to be, like, servants and peons. He's like, listen, I gave you my very best in order to have a relationship with you. Mm -hmm. And so he has proven himself again and again to us throughout the whole of our life. And, and And here's what's neat about that in verse 36. At the same time that Nebuchadnezzar does this, he, he says, my reason returned to me in the glory of my kingdom. But the important part is that his reason returned to him. And then verse 37, he said, now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven for all his works are right, his ways are just, and those who walk in pride he's able to humble. 
So the big thing right now, no matter what's going on, and my wife Tammy will say this sometimes, like, you know, she's like, you, sometimes you just need to stop and praise God for who he is. Sometimes, like, if when we're struggling, if we stop thinking about who the Most High God is, creator of heaven and earth, mm-hmm. faithful, savior, yeah. everlasting. Yeah, you're putting your finger on it right now, David, because that's what we got to do is praise his character and his perfection and his holiness and his awesomeness. Yeah, like, and that puts our little issues in, in proportion. Yeah, and it's hard, Bill, because sometimes it is, I don't know what it is, and you guys are a little further down on this, because sometimes I can get so focused on the problem I start talking about, you know, the old folks who say, don't talk about the size of your problem, talk about the size of your God to your problems. Right. But I don't know, sometimes it feels good talking about your problems, <laughs> even though it doesn't feel good. Does that make sense? Oh, totally. Does. Even yes. even in the worst circumstances, too, we all can be thankful for his goodness and his mercies every single day. But to your point, we do tend to focus on the problem. And I'm not negating, you know, there's a lot of hard stuff that, that is out there in the world today. There is, but we can always be thankful and focus back on God's goodness and his promises to us. Yeah, it's like, how do we how do we complain like a psalmist, <laughs> you know, where the psalmist is like, God, you're great. And by the way, this really stinks and mm-hmm. I'm hurting and I'm wondering, are you there? And, you know, yeah, you say like you love me, but I kind of feel like uh, you you don't. And and if I can keep it 100, there's been times where I've, I've sang songs like, you know, when we've seen the songs like, he's never failed me yet. And guys, there's times where I feel like, okay, like, I don't always feel that way. Right. You know, now the old folks used to also say, by and by when the morning comes and all the saints of God, mm-hmm. you know, get home, we'll tell the story, how we overcome, we'll understand it better by and right. by. Right. Okay, that whole perspective thing. Yeah. That the sun is still up there, even though this morning in Minnesota that came up with rain and stormy. Mm-hmm. But in the moment, it feels like, man, God, I feel like I'm, I'm hoeing this thing by myself, though it's it's not true. But like, so that whole thing, like how to like be like the psalmist, like not just fake it and be like, you know, the, the old Monty Python, old British humor where it's like, it's nothing but a flesh wound. And it's like, no, that's not a flesh wound. You are <laughs> ser- you're seriously bleeding. Mm-hmm. So. I like that Nebuchadnezzar in that he's like his sanity came back to him when he remembered who God was. And then like chapter five, it's his son who's basically throwing a party and being careless with the things of God. So they're having a party and they basically go into the treasury of God and they take out, you know, the, the utensils and stuff that were used in sacrifice and they, they pour alcohol in them and they make big gestures to the Babylonian gods and God steps in and is like, yeah, that's not cool. And then Daniel comes and says, hey, bro, um, really, you can't even have a party if it wouldn't have been for God who gave your father uh, part of the prophecy to even bring the people into exile and to even give you give him power to have wealth. And basically Belshazzar just remains arrogant, and then he ends up getting killed. But the focus is, is that... God gives. And sometimes we don't understand like how God does things. And that's back to 34, five, you know, he does among the host of heavens and among the habits of the earth and none can stay his hand or say to him, what have you done? Like he really is God and he is a good, good God, but like you can't stay his hand. No, no, you can't. (laughs) Yeah. And we, we often think of it in, such interestingly negative ways, but we don't stop fully to think that God still let Jesus go to the cross. Fully perfect, fully man, fully God without sin. Yeah. And he allowed him to go to the cross on behalf of rebels. That the book of Ephesians says that while we were yet enemies of enemies of God, mm-hmm. you know. He let him go to the cross. And what's crazy, King James Version of Isaiah 53, that it pleased the Father to bruise. Some verses say it pleased the Father to crush the Son. Like, sometimes it's like, I don't complain about that. Like, really, God? Like, seriously? Like, Jesus, I get it. Like, I've sinned and fallen short of your glory, but Jesus did nothing wrong. But yet you still chose to let your Son live and die for my sins. Mm. No. 
So, yeah. <sighs> what you said leaves me a little <laughs> speechless. I mean, that King James version of Isaiah 53, I don't know if I've heard that, but that's, that he, delight, he delighted in it. Yeah. Yeah, wow. I remember the first time I read that, I, like, had to pause. Yeah, just like the way I'm doing right now. Like, really? Yeah. You know, but it's like even Hebrews chapter 12, that for the joy set before him, Jesus scorned, endured the cross, scorning its shame, and now sits down to make intercession. For the joy, I mean, like, guys, sometimes I like to run, but there's times exercising, like I'm not necessarily looking forward to it. So like the thought of like going to a flogging and then going to the cross Mm -hmm. and the pain part is one thing, but then having all the sins of the world dumped upon you, that's another thing. Yeah. But for the first time since eternity past, experiencing separation in your relationship with the father it cries out to say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Like a pain so deep. But the Bible saying, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorned our shame. And he's amazing because now he sits down and makes intercession. I don't know about you guys. I mean, like even with Jesus, there'd be a part of me like, man, y'all jacked this up. Like, and sit down and I, I have to, I'm going to pray for you and intercede. But Jesus, that's what makes Jesus Jesus. That's that's what makes this gospel so mm-hmm. incredible. So I wonder if that really sinks in with people that Jesus is inter, intercessory praying on our behalf. That's pretty powerful. It is. Yeah. And this past weekend, um, one of the pastors was doing a message, and he actually talked a little bit about that out of Hebrews. Um, in Hebrews eight, again, reminder. Yeah. We, we talk about the need with our faith talk radio. Be in God's word, be in a, in a gospel community of perfectly imperfect Christians, growing in God's word and growing together, um, because he brought up uh, how Jesus makes intercession for us in, in Hebrews uh, chapter, I think it was chapter 7 or chapter 8, and he just talked about how Jesus was this person that though we sin, he he didn't, and so he became the perfect sacrifice, and then he sits and he makes intercession for us, and it's like, wow. I mean, it's really wow. Mm-hmm. really is. Pastor David Miles is our guest for Trusting in the Everlasting Dominion of God. This is a lovely study that we're having. If you have a question or comment of anything you've heard, we'd be happy to elaborate. You can send a question or comment to 877-933-2484. Uh, And we will be right back in just a minute with more of David Miles. It's the afternoon show with Bill Arno. Drive time, drive time. Let's get it started. Jump in your car. What's for dinner? It's the afternoon show with Bill Blessings to you this Monday. I hope you've had a great weekend, and I'm so glad that you tuned in today because we're talking to David Miles and talking about the trusting in the everlasting dominion of God. We're getting some great uh, passages out of the book of Daniel. And the next one up, uh, David, that I would love to read is Daniel chapter 6, 25 to 28. Do I have permission to read that? Yeah, before you go there, we, were, right. just, we were just talking about something at the break, and it was about the way that... God can use people in in simple ways. And we were talking about Belshazzar. We were talking about Daniel in chapter 5. And so Belshazzar is the son of Nebuchadnezzar, um, and he defiles the temple by drinking out of, you know, holy things and giving it to his God. And then immediately a finger writes on the wall, and he has a problem with this, this vision and he needs help. And none of the people can solve the interpretation. And it says in verse 10 that the queen, because of the kings, um, she comes to him and says, there is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And they bring Daniel because he's excellent in spirit, knowledge, and understanding to interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve problems were found in him. And so Daniel ends up being brought. And, you know, Daniel tells, um, you know, 
the king says, I've heard you can give interpretation and solve problems. He's like, hey, if you can read this writing and make known to me the interpretation, you shall be clothed with purple, have chain around gold around your neck, and be third ruler in the kingdom. Daniel says, listen, let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another. Like he's like, you're not buying me off. Nevertheless, I will read the writing to the king and make known. And then he basically tells him this vision. Sometimes in the midst of tumultuous times is that God wants to use people. And there's a reason why we are encouraging to walk in your faith and to do the verse a day and to be listening to Faith Talk Radio and to be in community with other people. Because Daniel was a part of a small group with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And it would come a point where the king needed something. And notice, it was the queen who said, I heard something about a person who followed God. And then that person was brought to the king. And they said, we noticed that you have this understanding. You have an excellent spirit. You have knowledge. You're able to solve problems. Simply put, guys, if we're faithful in our work to honor God, like some people are like, what do I do? How about today? Honoring God in your work, and are we known as those types of people? So like you said, why did it break? Even when the person came to the to Daniel, when Belshazzar said, you know, hey, dude, I see you can do this. He's like, actually, it's not me. Oh. I get to point to God. Right. And it's always more rewarding for us to approach those situations with humility and understand that our power comes from above and it's not us. It is always more rewarding to live faithfully, like you're saying, David, and honorably through our work, through our interactions every single day than it is to try and do things on our own or go a different direction. Yeah. And so sometimes we think, and this wasn't actually even part of our notes, and but it's a, it's a testimony thing. Sometimes we think this is so out there. I remember when I was in Ohio, there's a, a person who was our family intercessor, and he, he called me one day. He was in Seattle, and he was calling me because he's like, I really want to go home. I'm tired from work, but I feel like I'm supposed to go to Boston. So we started chatting about this, and we got done, and he said, I know what I'm supposed to do. So I hopped on a plane, flew out to Boston, and he walks into a meeting of the company that he works for. And they're like, what are you doing here? And he's like, I know the problem. I know I have the solution to the problem that we're having with this multi-million dollar project. And they're like, this isn't even your division. Now there's another guy who's a believer who's in this board reading and he just starts smiling. Hmm. And they're like, well, how would you know this? And he said, the Lord told me. And they're just like, dude, seriously, whatever. And so he goes over, pops up in the laptop, sits down, he starts typing and they're giving him a hard time. Like, what are you doing? Like, we haven't been able to solve this. It's typing, typing. All of a sudden hits enter, the whole thing lights up. <laughs> and they're just, how did, and he said, the Lord told me what was wrong. Cool. <laughs> and we're talking, I, I, I'm telling you personally, yeah. I know the person, I prayed with the person okay. on their decision to go there. So like, and it's so wild because we often think these things are so back, like with Daniel, but God wants to speak because when it was all said and done, they were like, we don't know what to do. This isn't your division. How would you know this? And the person said, I have to tell you, the Lord told me what the problem was with this system. Mm. And he did. And it's just so, it's so giddy. And it's like, well, are you, no, God is cool. God is super. In that moment, God got glory and praise because he wasn't supposed to know what was going on or to be able to solve it. And so, you know, God still wants to use us in these ways because he does, he does delight sometimes to astonish man, to say, I know you think you've kind of got it all together, but I am still here. I still love you, and I still want a relationship with you. Mm. Takes a lot of courage to listen to God's voice sometimes. Can you <laughs> well, imagine doing that, Bill? Well, I mean, that's incredible. You know why? You will know this because we had our Northeast conference a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago, and one of our keynote speakers uh, was a police officer, and <laughs> he arrested someone who had punched a fellow officer. So this guy has assaulted another officer, and he was taking him into the station to get him booked and uh, put him in jail. And the Lord said, let him go. <laughs> and he said, well, that's a crazy thought. I'm not going let, <laughs> to let, let him go. So he kept driving, and he's got closer to the station. He heard the Lord say, let him go. So he stopped the car and he said, I'm unarresting you. And he goes, the guy put up a fight because he thought he was going to let me go and then shoot me or something. You know, he was scared. And he, 
he said, I'm, I'm, I'm unarresting you. You're free to go. And a week later, of course, our guest who gave this talk, it was powerful. Extremely. Yeah. He said, uh, I was suspended for two weeks. I was put up on the desk job. And you said, not only are you going to maybe get fired from your job, but you might go to jail yourself for what mm-hmm. you did. Anyway, to make a long story tedious, um, he uh, got a call a week later from the guy he arrested and said, I want some officers to meet me in this parking lot. And they did. And he opened up his trunk and it was filled with drugs. And he said, I can help you catch all kinds of drug dealers. And for the next 13, 14 months from New York to Boston to New Jersey, they used him and he helped the police uncover drug cartels. Wow. And all because he listened to what God told him to do. It sounded crazy at the time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, there was one other thing he said about it that really resonates with me. He said, as he was going through this process and he was hearing the voice say, yeah. let him go. He thought to himself, okay, where in the Bible are there these crazy stories where it doesn't make <laughs> sense? And then he's like, oh, wait, every single story in the Bible is, is about somebody doing something crazy or that went like Noah and the ark, for instance. Yeah. It's just one of the many examples where it's like, okay, he listened to God's voice. Everybody called him crazy, but it worked out in the end for him because yeah. he was faithful to what God was calling him to do. It's just yeah. remarkable. Then he got a call from the CIA saying, yeah. <laughs> how did you do this? How did you get this guy to give up all these sources? And he said, well, I was just, I, I spoke to him like a human. <laughs> and he got a job with the CIA working in the Middle East for the next 25 years. Right. Yeah, it was amazing. <clears throat> Great story. And, you know, I think, like, God does this again and again through Scripture. And what keeps resonating in my ear and mind is trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall make straight your paths. And, like, right now we're, we're living in a time where across the board, like, across the board. And I know it's, it's hard for people to hear this because we naturally often just think it's, you know, the other person or the other side. But this whole push to not see people as fellow image bearers, Mm -hmm. okay? And all of this, like, focusing so much on this kingdom of the world and filling people with fear, you know? We have a faith that has endured. And, like, my dad served almost 22 years in the military. My brother served in the Navy. You know, I've worked as a chaplain with police and, and so love my country, and it's still 200 and what, 47 years of, an, of a neat experience that, that we're perfectly hoping continues to get better and better. But I serve a God who has a kingdom where there is no rust or moth. Right. I'm citizens of a heavenly kingdom. Yeah. I'm citizen of a kingdom that I can proclaim Jesus and it doesn't matter. Like last year when I was in Dubai, my message is still the same. When I'm in China, still the same. When I'm talking to unreached people groups in India, still the same. And it's the God that's existed all cultures, all backgrounds, all nations, because his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. His dominion endures forever. Yeah. And so so it's remembering, like, keeping the main thing the main thing and not being so pulled into some things. Mm-hmm. Like fulfilling our civic duties, we have to do that. We are responsible and fulfilling our heavenly civic duties. And David, our future is no pain, no disappointment, no suffering, nothing. Yeah. And I mean, like what we have compared to... Nothing bad. Should have finished that. Nothing bad. I think you know where I was going with that. (laughs) But Bill, like even the stuff, like Tammy will say this sometimes about how even sometimes we'll have a complaint about something and she's like, you know, such first world problems, you know, and it's, we're in this place, but Hebrews 13, these all died not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it was, they desired a better country. I mean, we live in a great country. We do. There's a whole bunch of stuff that the three of us, including my son Jaden, who's sitting next to us, that we can do that we would not have been able to, to do in other parts of the world. You know, 
that peonage in Europe where the oldest child got everything and made his, his siblings peons if you weren't the oldest. That was part of leaving the country to come here. Slavery, all those different things. But there is a, there is a better country still that is a heavenly one. And therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. Like God is preparing something for us that is, you know, beyond beyond anything that we imagine. So that call again in tumultuous hard times to turn to he who is faithful. Mm. I love it. Trusting in the everlasting dominion of God. That's our topic today with Pastor David Miles. We're going to take a little break and come back and continue this lovely study. We're in the book of Daniel. We'll be right back. It is my deepest desire that you take the very first step of faith by placing your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. If you've got questions about what it means to begin a relationship with Jesus, text the word FAITH to 41224. I'm back with Pastor David Miles and Wyatt, and we're talking about trusting in the everlasting dominion of God. Now, we got a little bit sidetracked because I was going to read Daniel 6, 25 through 28. David, we never got there. We didn't. I meant to get there, but maybe and we can try on, it now. Yeah. And, you know, first of all, that, that was on me, you know, because you, you were set to go there. And we had been in chapter five and we noticed that there there had been this problem and how God used Daniel and his everyday work to be a solution. Right. All right. Let's get back into it. Uh, Daniel 6, starting in 25. Then King Darius wrote to all the nations and peoples of every language in all the earth. May you prosper greatly. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel, for he is a living God and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. We're back on trusting in the everlasting dominion of God. It will never end. We are back on that. And, you know, whether it was Nebuchadnezzar and even whether it was Belshazzar or whether it was Darius, the same things about the Most High God were true. And, you know, I remember, you know, years ago, um, I wrote an article for, you know, Transform Minnesota, which is the Minnesota, former Minnesota Association of Evangelicals. And I wrote an article saying, were the three Hebrew boys wrong? And what I did in the article as, as a minister of the gospel... And, a and what pre- did you mean by the three Hebrew boys? The three Hebrew boys of uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I, I knew that's what you meant, but Sorry I wanted about you to that. say it out loud. That is, you know, sometimes we get into Christianese or shorthand yeah, or, or acronyms, Yes, you know, and we leave people out. So I was, just, I was telling Wyatt at the beginning, like, you know, he and, he and Bill are amazing, um, you know, co-hosts and producers who love God and want him honored and are excellent at what they do. And our listening family is really blessed to have both of you. And it's an honor for me to serve with you, which they're probably upset at me because they don't like that type of attention. But glory be to God. Uh, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were on the company clock. And, you know, they the king had set up this 90-foot statue of gold. And he said, listen, I'm calling everybody and when you hear the sound of the music, you need to bow down. And if you don't bow down, you're going to be thrown in the fiery furnace. Well, they wouldn't bow down. So then these people come and say to him, hey, king, those, those Hebrew boys. And the text actually says that it's an ethnic designation saying that they were ignoring the national routine. And, you know, if they bow, then cool. But they don't. And so they end up getting thrown in the furnace. And we've always taught that that was the right thing. So I, I had actually wrote this article do, doing the whole kneeling protest and saying, like, were they wrong? Because they were on the clock. They were being told to bow to national, you know, treasure at the sound of music. And my concern in that moment was people had gone so hard in on it that I said, the danger is you can miss that the devil will use anything. And this is what I meant was this. In Daniel chapter 3, death was based upon them not bowing, physically not bowing before the statute. When you get to Daniel chapter 6, it's a new administration. And whereas Nebuchadnezzar used force, Darius actually tried to work with the people 
and set up these 120 satraps. But in that particular administration, it was about who you could even pray to. And I said, I was giving a warning to the church to be careful about getting sucked in and saying, well, you have to stand for the anthem and all those things. Even though I'm very patriotic, I said, because a person can come back later and say, like Darius, well, you can't even pray to somebody. And so you had two different administrations that handled things differently. But in both situations, Daniel said, the most high God is my one pursuit. So Daniel got up at the same time every day and went out and prayed. And so he gets thrown into the, into the lion's den because it says in verse um, chapter 7, the officials sought to find a ground or a complaint against Daniel regarding the kingdom, but they could find no ground for complaint or any fault because he was faithful and no error or fault was found in him. Then these men said, we shall not find any ground for complaint against Daniel unless we find it in connection with the law of his God. So they realized that he operated in his work in such a way that they couldn't, they couldn't, couldn't bribe him. So they had to actually connect it to his relationship with God and made it an issue that you can't even pray to people. And so as believers, we always make the most high God our God because different Political groups and all that, they have different ways of doing things. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, God is God is supreme. And we must always allow him to be supreme in our heart, even as we work within those systems. Because Daniel worked for Nebuchadnezzar, he worked with Belshazzar, and he worked in Darius's. Now, he might have worked in them, but God was his king and ruler and most high. And that's what we always have to remember and keep center and focused. Nicely done, David Miles. Just the contrast between human rule and divine authority. We answered to divine authority. Yeah, we despite answer. Despite the pressure of human rule. Yeah, and we do. And we have to be careful. Like, there's many beautiful, good things about, as Romans 13 says, about putting human government in place. You know, listen, if my house is on the West Coast and it's up in the mountains um, and there's a forest fire, yeah, I can get together with my neighbors and get buckets of waters and, and some hoses. In that moment, I'm, a, I'm appreciative that government actually has big planes with fire retardant and steps in. Okay. Now, there's also some things that aren't necessarily operating properly. Mm-hmm. And so, like, so us constantly being before the Lord and making it that, um, are we really being in fidelity to Him? Mm-hmm. Because... The religious authorities got together with the political authorities and put Jesus to death. The Pharisees and the Sadducees didn't like each other, but they managed to hook up with the Herodians and Pilate to put Jesus to death. So, so don't, don't let that be the ultimate thing because we, we, we want to be faithful in those things. And a great impact is going to happen from you walking across the street to your neighbor and saying, hey, what are you doing Thursday? Nothing. You want to come with me to this event? And that might be the greatest change in that person's life. You never know, David. You never know. Yeah, and then to find comfort in God's unchanging nature, uh, to celebrate that every day when you can thank God and praise him for who he is, right? I'll say it again, Bill. I remember in 2008 preaching at Brooklyn Park Free Church, and I said, guys, listen, in 15, 20 years, I don't know who's going to be on the ballot, but I am going to know that Jesus is Lord and Savior. Amen. And he's the person. I don't know who's going to be on 2040 or whatever year right. it's going to be, but Jesus will still be Lord. So keep the main thing the main thing. And we'll close with how we started with the Faith Radio verse of the day. This one really spoke to me. It comes from Numbers chapter 6, 24 and 25. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. David Miles, thank you so much, Wyatt. Always uh, appreciate you. We're going to take a little break. An hour two, my friend, uh, Dr. Mark Muska, who is a professor here at Northwestern for 37 years, is going to be my guest for Ask the Professor. So if you've got a question for a Bible professor, let us know what it is. You can start sending them over 
right now. 877-933-2484. Again, 877-933-2484. And we'll be back in a couple of minutes with Dr. Mark Muska. Thanks for listening. Programming like this is made available through your support. Information available at MyFaithRadio.com.